Welcome back guys to another YouTube tutorial it's your boy Sam hope you all are doing great in this tutorial right here we'll be creating a trading bot in Python if you're new to this channel please subscribe like the vid guys like the vid it really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and it just allows more people to see this video so yeah I really would appreciate that and what we're creating here as I said earlier it's a trading bot in Python and this trading bot right here the whole concept or the whole way we're going to build it is that the strategy we're going to use is we're going to implement a simple breakout strategy that dynamically changes its look back length now before we actually implement our algorithm we must first develop a trading strategy and this is a must when you're going into trading probably most of you who are watching this video already know a little bit of trading you cannot be successful without a trading strategy and this bot has to have a trading strategy if not if you give it money it's gonna for sure lose it and in this video we're going to implement a simple breakout strategy this strategy will look at the past highs of a given instrument and generate a buy signal as soon as the price manages to break out of its previous high after buying the security we we'll want to send out the trading stop loss that follows the price upward as long as the price continues to rise our stop loss will do so as well but as soon as it drops more than a certain amount the position will be closed the idea behind this trading stop loss is to cut our losses short and let the winners run when developing a trading algorithm it's very important to be very precise with what you want identifying when a significant price breakout occurs might be very easy for us but it isn't that easy for a bot now what we want our algorithm to do is to dynamically determine how far it looks back for a breakout level based on the securities volatility if the volatility is high we want to look further into the past than when the volatility is relatively low by doing this the algorithm will automatically adapt to changes in volatility now to summarize what we just discussed this strategy is a very simple breakout strategy that dynamically changes its look back length furthermore it uses a trading stop loss to protect against potential losses i know what guys let's get started with the coding and yeah guys so the first thing we need to do is you need to create a quant connect account you can see here you sign up it's totally free make sure you sign up and yeah, I'll tell you what to do next, but sign up for Quant Connect. You can get the link down in the description of this video. So click on that link, sign up for Quant Connect, and I'll meet you in the terminal. When you've created your account with Quant Connect, you should have something very similar, identical to what I have right here. All you need to do is click on project. And then in project, you need to click on create a new algorithm right here. When you click on it, you see we get some boiler code, but we won't need all this. So I'm just going to delete all this, delete this, and also this right here. And then we start. You can see we have our class and we have our two methods. We will need NumPy to calculate the standard deviation for the volatility adjusted loopback length. So that's why we're using NumPy. Make sure you actually add NumPy without it. It's not going to work. And yeah, guys, in our initialize method, you can see that I have three initialization. The first one is the set cache, and I set this to 100,000. And this is arbitrary. You could obviously use whatever you want. And then we have our set start date, and this is the date I used. And you can see that I used like three years difference because it's 2018, and this is 2021. So that's important. You can choose whatever starting and ending date you want, but make sure there's enough space so we can collect all the data that we're going to need. Now, what we did next is that we add an asset and this asset is basically going to act as our security. And you can see that's why we use the add equity. And after we did this, what we added next is that we need to add the number of days that we will look back to determine the breakout point. After that, what we need to look at is the upper and the lower limit for our look back length because we don't want the look back length to be too big or too small. So in this case, I chose 30 and 5. Now, what we need to do next is we need to see the price offset for the stop order. 
we have our initial stop risk and we have our trailing stop risk. We need to create a schedule function for 20 minutes after every market open. And right now we're going to create the method for this schedule. But yeah, I just wrote it right here. And you can see the method we're going to create is each market open. For our on data method, what we need to first do is we need to plot the securities price. What we need to do is we need to plot the securities price. And after that, we need to actually create our each market open where we'll actually dynamically determine the loopback length based on a 30 day volatility change rate. And when we're done with that, we're going to account for the upper and the lower limit of the loopback length. Now, what we're doing here is we're buying in case of a breakout. And this is a mistake. The comment is wrong. I will change that later on in the video. But what you will see is that before we actually buy in case of a breakout, what we need to do is we need to have a list of daily highs. So we need to create a list of daily highs. And we'll use the history for that. Now, what we also need to do is we need to create a trailing stop loss if there's an investment. Now that we've done that, another thing we need to do is that we need to check if no order exists that we actually send a stop loss. And yeah, guys, we're getting close. We're getting close. I'm really excited to see actually how much we make from this bot. But what we need to do next is we need to check if the assets price is higher than the highest price and the trailing stop price is not below the initial stop price. And what we need to do is that we need to save the new high to the highest price. And then after that, we need to update the stop price. And when we've updated the stop price, we need to print the new stop price with debug. And finally, what we need to do is plot the trailing stop price. And now that we're here, we can finally actually backtest. So you click the backtest button. Finally, you can see we've done our backtesting and we made a net profit of 27,000 from actually putting 100,000, which is not bad at all. And you can see our candle, it shows us where the price was higher and then when it dropped with the red and the green candlesticks. And we also have some information here where you actually see that our net profit was 53%, which is not bad at all. Our win rate was 50% and the loss rate was 50% also. We made nine total trades and an average win of 16%, which is not bad at all. It's not the best too, but it's okay. It's basically okay. Now you can see the days that we actually traded for. When you see a zero like this, that means it's maybe a Sunday or a Saturday, or it's a public holiday where there's no trade occurring. Now over here, you can see that you can add a data chart, you can add a benchmark, strategy, equity, inside count, alpha, alpha assets. So there's a lot of data for you to actually see. Now you can see that this data shows us the stop price and when that actually occurred. So this is really cool. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new guys. And also put down in the comments below if you have any questions. That's it for this video. I'm going to wrap this up and I'll see you all in the next video video.